Today I'll cover the top features in iOS 18.1, some iPadOS stuff as well, you know, the ones that really matter, specifically focusing on key Apple intelligence features here today and how they might actually be useful for you. Unless you're in Europe, in which case... Computer says no. And of course, if you don't have one of these devices listed here, in this case, the computer also says no. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. And as a user of AI features from Android devices, I'll throw in some honest feedback as well on where I think Apple is actually winning or still falling behind. Now, I do have a general complaint when it comes to Apple intelligence, which is to do with availability and the rollout itself. Frankly, feels like it's up there with the worst software releases in Apple history. We don't have all the languages, you know, some features are completely absent from the from the release and people are confused as well online going, you know, I thought I was going to get it and it says beta and you have to join a waiting list. Look, it's a bit of a dog's dinner, let's be honest. I've winched enough about this in other videos, so I won't go on too much here, but let's just say Apple intelligence and the way it's being released, it's a bit embarrassing actually. And to give you a bit of context before we go through all the features here, here's my current Apple setup. My iPhone 16 Pro is on beta version running iOS 18.2 now. My M2 iPad Pro is on iPadOS 18.1. My iPad mini 7 is on the beta version as well of iPadOS 18.2 and the Apple Watch is on watchOS 11.1. My MacBook is running macOS Sequoia 15.1 so everything is pretty much up to date with a couple of devices running beta. You're not gonna hear this very often here on YouTube, but honestly, Apple intelligence is largely Apple playing catch up. But really to do my job here, I wanna give you my honest view on the features that I find useful on my day to day, and I'm pretty sure you'll find it as well. There's about 30 new features, but these are the ones that made the cut for this video and actually have a bit of real world value. The first one is writing tools. I have to put this at the very top because I use this on a daily basis on other devices. Apple has bundled this into Apple intelligence and is integrated into messages, notes, email. So you can tone down the message to your mate if you realize halfway through that you know you come across a little bit too harsh or maybe a little rude. Or you can make a message to your boss or a client sound a little bit less casual and a bit more professional. You just type into the rewrite tool, picking a friendlier tone on the fly. It's better. Let's add an eye rolling pig emoji. So now instead of sending something potentially rude, you could get your message across in a much nicer way. It's also got grammar checks, which as someone whose mother tongue is not English, I really appreciate this. And it has summarization options too, which works across different apps as well, but more on that in just a moment. If you've used a third party app like Grammarly, or you had an Android phone, you'll be familiar with this. The benefit here, of course, is that unlike Grammarly, writing tool is built in, so no need for any third party apps or any subscriptions or anything like that, just like, you know, Galaxy AI. Now here's a feature that I didn't expect to appreciate as much as I do, which is summarization in Safari. I use Chrome a lot, but to see this in Safari actually made me use the Safari browser a little bit more on the iPhone. If you're like me and you've got countless articles that you intend to read, but you never quite finish or you save it all in the for later, right? And you never go back to it. This summarization is the answer now. You can hit a single button and Safari gives you a quick summary of any article. Perfect for anyone who's always busy really. You now sometimes you just wanna get the gist of the story without spending 10 minutes reading an article. It's like Apple finally got the message that you know people have better things to do, you know? That saves quite a bit of time actually, so um, not bad. As you can appreciate here, there's a lot of iOS and iPadOS features. There'll be more than one video covering this stuff and there are three more top features coming out and Apple are not the only ones releasing new stuff. Today's sponsors Caseify have been busy bees too. They've released some awesome new products like the iPhone cases I'm showing you here, like this one here, and these great Apple Watch accessories too. I mean, this new leather strap here for the Apple Watch Ultra is beautiful, very classy. This here is the Caseify Impact ring stand. Now, this case is already fell very premium before. And now with this like special Batman 85th anniversary edition here, it looks amazing with this like mirror details as well. Yeah. This may actually be my favorite Casetify design yet. Really nice how they did the cut out of the Batman picture in here. Have a look. The camera ring here doubles up as a very useful kickstand for creatives out there. Or if you just take lots of videos and photos, it can even work as a mini tripod. The ring material as well feels very sturdy and I love how it works on both vertical and horizontal orientations. This makes it a great accessory for taking photos, videos, but also to watch content, hands-free. 
Caseify has really stepped up with their products this year, you know? Their cases continue to be some of the most stylish around, and now they've added even more functionality. In other videos on the channel, I've shared their new Ultra Bounce cases with their incredible attachment system too, and this here is another type of body strap, which I really like. A little bit more understated this one, but quite elegant at the same time. This is another great example of versatility. All the products, you know, tend to have multiple uses, which is great, but don't forget about protection as well. I've job tested several iPhones. In fact, the floor here is made out of concrete, which is why it's so echoey here sometimes. So let me show you this. All right. <laughs> All right. No scuffs here either. A couple of scuffs here on the case, but that's what it's meant to do, right? Awesome protection, right? Now, as I said, KCFI right. have really stepped up again this year and have loads of new products, including these MagSafe accessories here. This snappy card holder stand is my absolute favorite. You can keep one card safely in here, like a credit card or your gym card. Any double zap is a very useful stand as well, either vertical or horizontal, like a nightstand. Super handy and there's a special discount for all my viewers as well. If you're looking for stylish accessories that won't break the bank and will protect your devices as well, head over to casetify.com forward slash Alex G for 15% off your order. And thank you so much Casetify for sponsoring this video. Now this here is the third most useful feature in my opinion that Apple released, which is the Photos app. It got loads of new updates in there, but this here is the most useful for me. I use this all the time with my other devices and I've actually shared this here on the channel as well before. Apple Intelligence now lets you remove unwanted objects from any photo or people as well. It's done a really good job of removing stuff. Nice. So many times where right, you think you took that perfect shot, then you go home and you go, oh my gosh, there's someone behind it or a car went by or there's some something weird in the photo that you wish wasn't there. Now you can just click on this clean app option. It's not quite up to like Photoshop standard, so don't expect a magic here, but for smaller objects and just it actually does a great job of removing people like completely and the result is excellent actually. A quick tip here is don't try to like remove complex backgrounds because you will try to recreate the photo and instead you're gonna you know, be left with something like some weird artifacts in there but I'm sure this will get better with time. Now this next feature is a strange one for me because of regulations but you can now record your phone calls. In Apple style it looks very sleek, it looks really nice, right? the UI is great but the reason I say this is a strange one is because you know law is gonna be very different depending on where you are. When you start recording the call, you and the person on the other side will be told that the call is being recorded. But just be aware that in some states in the US, for example, you know, you are required to get consent from the other person, or if it's a conference call, everyone on that call as well in some states. Here in the UK, it's a little bit different, but if you are gonna use it professionally, you do have to request consent as well. Once you've recorded it though, it allows you to do a full transcription and use AI to do a lot more with that transcription as well, like summarize it, give you like bullet points, you know, key summarization stuff. There's actually a more professional way of doing this, way more advanced and doesn't require an iPhone actually, but that's my next video. And Siri has now learned some contextual awareness, which is great. To be honest though, what position is Man United in the league? Actually, who is the Man United coach right now? I got to like try not to swear here and try to be on the positive side here, but I still find the results a little bit hit and miss with Siri. You know, like I asked what the traffic was like going home and it gave me some random results, like an engineer, a police station and a leisure center. I was like, how, do you, how did you mix that with traffic going home? You know, I know my, I've got a dodgy accent, but you know, come on. When I did ask again, it gave me the right information. So it is just, you know, it has a mind of its own sometimes. But for the basic commands, like, you know, the weather information and things about meetings and things like that, even if you change your mind mid-sentence now and correct yourself like halfway through, Siri doesn't get thrown off. You know, it does actually do a good job of that. But I don't know, Apple has finally taught Siri a few more practical skills, like answering device specific questions and, you know, it's taken a while for Siri to be redeveloped, but the reality is it's still not quite there by far. I think it's still, there's quite a bit more, more to improve in here, you know? So overall, despite what you may have heard out there, it's been a pretty mediocre update, or mid, as the kids say. There are very useful features here, but considering how long Apple has taken to release Apple Intelligence personally, I'd expect them to be way ahead of where they are right now. Instead, it feels like Apple is just rushing some stuff and, you know, ticking the boxes in some features just to, to say that they've got it now. But anyway, don't get me wrong though, these features will be helpful for lots of people, including myself, but they're hardly groundbreaking is what I'm saying. And maybe that's just the Apple way now. I'm perhaps being too critical sometimes, but I have decided to give myself 
a challenge. I want to give Apple maybe one last chance this year. Starting today, I will be using only Apple products and software for a whole month. You know, and I'll give you a full, like a rounded review of the entire Apple ecosystem here and Apple intelligence at the end of November. Stay tuned for that one. So let's see if Apple can actually pull this off and win me back as a consumer, or if I'll be left wondering, why didn't I just stick with Android? Yeah? <laughs> see you soon.